Okay, first thing for this project is uh, getting a piece of paper. Now it can just be a regular piece of paper or paper, or it could be um, like this was a menu that I got. And I like the size of it. It's 16 and a half by 11 and a half. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's 16 and a half by 11 and a half. And it's just nice sturdy paper, um, but it can just be a plain piece of paper because we're going to collage on it. And what I did is I just went through some of my vintage books and got some of my papers out and I'm going to be kind of regimented so they're not, um, it's basically from one book and I'm just making the background out of it. So I'm getting um, my glue stick, which I think is the best way to do collage because it's, it's you know, it's a drier medium and it doesn't buckle the paper. But you want to get a good, even application of this. This is fairly thin paper, so I didn't want to use matte medium on it. Okay, I want to have this all right side up. And I'm just going to glue, just make a, a grid of this paper. <clears throat> and the substrate. Make it as flat as I can so that there's no air bubbles. Okay. over that but just a little bit there and seal that and then I cut off some paper so I'll trim that a little bit too or I can overlap I might just overlap that okay Okay, and then I'll just finish the bottom two off camera. Okay, so here it is. I'm all done. And I added a few little pieces down here just to fill this up. Okay, so now the next step is we want to put a little bit of gesso. I'm going to mix. I have some clear gesso here. And then I have some regular gesso and I'm going to do like a half and half so that um, it's uh, that we're just giving like a milky covering over this um, 
over these papers. So I'm just gonna get that ready. Okay, so here's my half and half. And I'm just going to brush this on. And even if you don't have clear gesso, you can use just regular gesso and just water it down a lot. And it'll work just fine. I might even just add it now. Okay, I'll continue this off camera and I'll be back. Okay, so here's the handout that I have for you. And I, I have it in two pieces because um, I print on eight and a half by 11 paper. So you'll, you'll need to print out both and it, it does, it overlaps. So what you do then with this is, I'm just going to, my glue stick that and line these up. Oops. Do one quarter at a time. that I'm gonna line it up over this way this is a little easier there okay okay so we're doing an image transfer so what you want to do with this print out, I'm going to go like this and have as little overlapping as possible. So when you do the transfer, you're not having to pull away double layers of the paper. It'll make sense in a minute. <clears throat> okay, there's just a little bit. As you can see, there's a little bit of overlay, but not much. Okay, so. So this is your image that you're going to be transferring. I just want to make sure everything's really flat. Okay, so in order to do an image transfer, if you don't know how, I'm gonna show you, um, but people that know me and know my classes, they know how much I love image transfers and I've been teaching it over and over again. But I'm gonna repeat it again because that's, you know, there's new people always coming in and I want to share my way of doing a transfer. So I'm gonna first get my matte medium and I'm gonna put it on the on the substrate here. Get a nice gen generous amount. And if any of you guys are interested in this process of creating these multiple images. I use a program, Photoshop Elements, and it's not the full boat uh, Photoshop. It's Photoshop Elements, 
It's about $99. It's really, really worth investing in. And so what I did is I traced, and I'll show you, I traced my, my one image, and I'll show you how I did that. You know, I made it, I traced her, and then I scanned her, I photographed this. I don't have a scanner. Uh, if you have a scanner, that's even better. You can scan your image in. And then what I did, uh, and depending on how your scan is, um, I just, um, I, I took a snapshot of this, and then I refined it by using the pen tool and just outlining the, um, the outline of this figure. Hold on, let me just do this first while, um, while I'm doing it. And so I don't get distracted. Okay, so I put the uh, joint, con I mean the matte medium. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm getting the matte medium on both the image and the substrate. And it's kind of a big transfer. Um, try and get most of the air bubbles out if you can. Um, that'll help. Um, I mean, this isn't doesn't have to be a perfect transfer because it's just outlines of these figures and you're, we're going to be painting them and you know so the this transfer is just for placement and also um, so that you're not having to hand draw and duplicate each each image so even if some of it tears off a little bit you'll have enough information for this transfer to be of value And just try and get as much of the air bubbles out as you can. And I really embed this in press. And I just let this air dry. And I usually let it dry overnight. And usually in a couple hours, a couple hours, you can feel it. If um, it's kind of cool right now, it has a cold touch to it. And then once it's dry, you you won't have that that it will it will definitely warm up or neutralize and you won't have you won't feel that coldness because everything's dry but the whole best thing about it the the most important thing about transfers is you want enough of the matte medium on there on both the substrate and the image and you want to get the air bubbles out That's really important. And another thing is you don't, I'm really stressing this, you don't want to get any matte medium on this paper, this white paper on the outside, because that's going to seal that in. You're not going to be able to um, peel away this paper, because this white paper, we're going to be peeling it away so that when we uncover all this, we're gonna see that image right on this substrate. And so if there's any matte medium on top of it, you're not gonna be able to get it off. So really be careful about not getting any of the matte medium on this outside white paper. Because you wanna have a lot of access to remove it. Okay. So that while, while that's drying, I will go over what I was talking about. Okay, so this is the picture I used to, um, to create my image, my little figure. And it's this book that I got in Morocco. And it's, you know, it's one of these Moroccan women. And so I thought that was appropriate image for me since I just got back and uh, I find them just incredibly beautiful their costuming and everything so 
I'm, I'm extremely inspired by them. So that's what I used. And so my process is you just get a piece of tracing paper. And I mean, this is a really simplified outline I'm gonna do. When we start painting, we can go into a little more detail in some of them, but the initial, the initial sketch outline can be very, very basic. Like even the hands, I'm just making them really, really basic. It's not supposed to be realistic at all. It's supposed to be graphic. That's basically all the detail I want for that. Now you can go over it with a marker. Oops, wrong marker. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, got the right marker finally. I'm just using this black marker. Face, very, very basic. And the whole idea when you're you're painting it is that you can have slight variations. And the line work. But basically having the, the same form. So I highly recommend, if you like doing this stuff, is to get Photoshop Elements, and then in there, you can take this form and duplicate it, change the size, and make your own pattern. So that's it. And then you can just get an eraser and just erase away any of the pencil line work. So when you scan it in or photograph it, you're not getting a lot of double line work. I mean you can do, you can trace it right using a marker. 
I'm just giving you options. So then that's the image you have. And then you, as I said, you can either scan it or take a picture of it, drop it in that program. And I'm sure there are other programs. I just use, I like Adobe Photoshop Elements. Um, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck with that program. And so it's just really easy. You can just scan this in and then, uh, what I did with the one that I'm giving you guys, I actually outlined, instead of doing the, the outline here, I did the outline. I made one layer, this image, and then I made another layer, which is what I use. I use the pen tool to outline this figure. And then from that image, I duplicated it, reduced and enlarged it to the different sizes that I wanted and then uh, made my my file in the in the Photoshop uh, 11 and a half by 16 and a half so that it would be the same size as what I'm going to be painting on on my substrate so um, that's that's how I did that if you're interested it's really fun. Um, I mean, the other old school way of doing this is, you know, just having these and then you could put transfer paper underneath this and then, you know, transfer each one down. It just would take, it would take a long time to do it. Um, another thing you could do is if you don't have the editing program, you can take your image and make copies make a bunch of little copies. Um, and what you can do is make a copy of one or a couple, and then put those copies on one page and then copy like three or four images on the paper. So that you, when you're making your copy, not, not each copy is going to be just one image on one, on one piece. You can, let's see if I have something here. Like here's another one that I had scaled down. So what you could do is you have your copies and then you can just kind of place your Xerox copies on your eight and a half by 11 and then make a copy of that. And then you're gonna have, you know, how many images you can fit on this. You probably can fit about eight different uh, images on here plus you probably could you could duplicate more of this so you can always do it that way and um, and then uh, do a transfer with that so that's that's another way to do it if you don't have if you don't have an editing program or if you don't want to use an editing program so but either way it's fun so uh, I will see you coming up and we'll start painting after I pull my transfer off. Okay, now it's time to take the transfer off. And I use these magic erasers. I get them in the grocery store. And I wet it. And it helps take that layer of paper off. Yeah, these will be used, find these in the cleaning department. Uh, they have Mr. Clean and they have just generic magic. Magic eraser. They work really good. I mean, you can still just add water and with your finger, take this layer of paper off. This is just an easier application to do it. Let's see how it's coming through. That's what you want. So I'll just continue this off camera and show you it after I'm finished. 
Okay, so I got most of the paper off of this. Um, you'll see when it starts to dry, there'll be so if you start to rub, you'll see some some um, excess paper that just kind of rub some of this paper off and you get all this these little irritating things that come from the paper rubbing off and so if you start to paint on that it's going to get really funky so what you need to do even though you get most try and get most of the paper off the transfer there's always going to be a little left over so in order to um, prevent any of the paper peeling as you're painting you'll want to put a layer of matte medium on top of this. That or clear gesso, either one. The clear gesso will give you a bit of a tooth and the matte medium will be smoother. So since I'm gonna be using pencil, I like a smoother, smoother surface when I'm working with a pencil. So I'm gonna use the matte medium and just get my utility brush, or this, this is great. This is, um, I'll have to look it up. It's a Tim Holtz um, application. I think it's for, you know, applying for collage. And this thing is really, works really well. And, you know, I wash it out and I can reuse it over and over again. It's not like some of those cheap uh, brushes that you get at Home Depot that you can only use them like one or two times and then they get real stiff and then the um, bristles come out. This is a real workhorse. And it's it's just, I love it. I just, I love it. And it just continues to work. It continues even though when I wash it, it feels kind of stiff when it starts drying. I apply water to it again and the bristles are nice and soft. So it's just a brush I use all the time. So I'm just going in and just putting a layer of the matte medium on here. And that way it will seal everything in so that you won't get any surprises when you start painting on it. Okay, and then I'll just let this dry. And then the next video will be actually painting on this thing, which will be so much fun. So I'll see you in the next video. So I was had to give a lot of thought about the palette I wanted to use. And so I have the watercolors that I'm going to be using. I will list, you know, some of them. Um, others, mostly I, I can list the ones that I got from Daniel Smith. And then some of the other ones like these, I actually got some th through a company called Wild Thorn. And they sell these in little pallets. And so I, I really liked this kind of dusty lavender color and then the kind of rust and then this dirty pink and the kind of turquoise color. Um, so I included that in this in my palette. I, I had one of these um, containers and I just got the little um, the little plastic container so that you can add your colors to create a palette. So actually it's this row here and then these are the colors I'm going to use. And so, um, and then the other colors, I, I'm looking for like a rusty kind of a deep purpley mixture with some pinks. And this is Shell Pink by Holbein. And so I'm thinking of using that, those colors, getting some, some, you know, some really brick kind of colors as well. Um, and then leading into more of the purpley and purpley blue colors with, I have some Payne's gray there and ultramarine blue. And then I want a pop of some kind of yellow. So I have the um, burgundy yellow ochre uh, this yellow came from this. This is another, uh, they have another handmade watercolors on Etsy, Jasper Stardust. 
and this was a collection I got of his and I really like this color here which is poppy so I put that in there um, so I'll list the, the actual companies but um, as far as the individual colors I will list the um, Daniel Smith and then also the shell pink from Holbein so the colors I have here from Daniel Smith I'll be using here, I'll just put these in an order like this. Um, I'm using um, Pematite Genuine, and and then I'm also using a Perlin Maroon, and the Perlin Maroon has a little more red in it. Uh, there's also this English Rose color, which is a, an earthy rose, and then I have Quinn Violet, which is really strong on its own, but I wanted to gray it down a little bit, and you can gray things down by using the um, the opposite color, which would be um, be yellow. So um, I added a little bit of yellow to the um, to the violet, and then for the blue colors, I have ultramarine blue. I also have lavender which is kind of a, um, like a, ultramarine blue is trans, transparent and lavender is a little more opaque. So, um, so I have those colors. I also have Payne's gray. And then this is another one of those kind of wild colors, purpley colors. Um, it's called Pike. And this is part of Jasper um, Stardust. But you can use, any colors you want. I just wanted to get a color palette down. And so I'll show you my color palette. And you know, if you want to imitate that, that's fine. Or if you want to do something on your own, because it's, you know, now we have all the images like this. And now I want it to look more um, pattern like in in a way with using color combinations, like I want to do the the rusty maroony colors down here and then i want to do an area of the blue and purpley blues as they're going up so that there's kind of a striation of the colors and maybe mixing in a little wild color here and there like the, the yellow so that's kind of my vision is almost like color blocking on this piece so let's see what we can come up with um and so there might be some mixing involved. Um, I'm thinking that, let's see, which one did I want to, oh, hold on. Okay. So let's see what this is. This is the Pematite Genuine. A really purpley color here. It's really pretty. So that would be one shade. I might do a thing where I take this and mix it in with a little bit of rust, a rust color. A little bit more. Yeah, that's becoming a little more rust. Okay, then I can go in with some of this. I think this is English Red Rose.
And this is Daniel Smith. They're a little more opaque. Clean my brushes a little better. That's like a potter's pink. Those two colors are pretty much very similar. Now the shell pink is really pretty. And it's definitely an opaque watercolor. And let's see, did I use... So that's Pematite Genuine, and then the rustier one is the Perlin Maroon. Now this is Quinn Violet. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's the Quinn Violet. Now, if I wanted to doll this down a little bit, I can do something like this and just add a little bit of yellow. And that's a Pematite, or that's a Burgundy Yellow Ochre. And see how that just kind of dusts that down a little bit. So those are kind of the colors I'm going to use for those maroony, pinky colors. And now for the blues and the purpley blues. There's a Payne's Gray. And this is that blue that I got from Wild Thorn. I'm using most of the colors from there. So that's from Wild Thorn. Here's the lavender. And I could dull that down a little bit, add a little bit of that makes a really nice neutral color. And you'll want some neutral colors in there. Like I think the paint's gray and then this color would make nice neutral colors. This is the color from Jasper Stardust. I may or may not use this one, but it's there. And then, uh, this is the ultramarine blue, which is way too bright. And you can add an orange color to all that down. I'll just take some of the burgundy yellow ochre.
and that kind of neutralizes that a little bit. And then we have this burgundy yellow ochre on its own. And we make sure your brushes and water are as clean as you can be. I'm not good at keeping things clean. I'll try though for this. And here's that other color from Jasper Stardust that I like. Okay, so that's pretty much my palette. So I'm going to start at the bottom with some of these colors and then gradually add some of these. I'll add some of the neutrals throughout the different variations to make them pop. And uh, so that's how I'm going to start this. So I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way and get prepared for painting.